101 shows. I don't know if that's the magic number, but it is a magic number. Everybody said I should have a big celebration on the 100th, and I'm like, well, maybe we should have a big celebration on the 111th show. Everybody sing along if you know this one. At home there, sing along too, ready? Something's gonna happen and it could be good. Something's gonna happen and it could be good. doing his remodeling project right now when we go live. <laughs> oh, you never know just how life is going to go. So you jump in your boat and roll, roll, roll. Jump in your boat and roll, roll, roll. Here we go. Something's going to happen and it's going to be good. your dream. Jump in your boat and roll, roll, roll. Jump in your boat and roll, roll, roll. Here we go. Something's gonna happen and it could be good. Something's gonna happen and it could be good. Something's gonna happen and it could be good. Something's gonna happen like we knew I didn't know I'd make it to show 101, but I sure did. <laughs> Here it is, back at home. I want to invite you all to be patrons on Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. If you go to patreon.com slash the Laura Shepherd Show, you can pledge money. And every time I post a show up on YouTube afterwards, it would, I would get money from your account into my account. I think that's a great idea. I think you know, you can buy me a beer next time you see me or become a patron on Patreon. It's not difficult. Now, I don't know why you should feel like you have to give me money, but I'm asking for it, so there's a good reason why not. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, Michelle, would you care to join me on the stage? Absolutely. How exciting. <laughs> we have Michelle Leonello. Leonello. Hi, Laura. Hello, welcome. And you are? Sunshine Guidance Services. Yes, I am. I That's my uh, company, and I'm a psychic medium I'm from upstate New York, the Syracuse slash Rochester, New York. And I've been living in the St. Petersburg area um, since May of 2021. Okay, you are, you call yourself, you are self-titled a psychic medium. Yes, I am Laura. Okay, that's good. And I mean self-titled because you could call, see people could call you not a fortune teller. I'm not, I don't believe I'm a fortune teller. Um, I've been blessed with the ability to connect with people who've crossed the veil. Okay, and how did you know you could do such a thing? Um, well, I was raised in a household where my mother was very much into the metaphysics. Mm. Um, I was probably the first nine or 10 year old to go to my guru and get my mantra. What um, guru did you go to? I can't remember. Okay, I just remember guru. you were a turban and mom said you're going in there and getting your mantra. Okay, <laughs> and, well, yeah, can you share, is it a private mantra? Yes. Do you wanna, okay, it's private, that's and okay. And I didn't quite understand. Yeah. And I also used to, I teach yoga and when I was young, I was attracted to yoga, but it was a different kind of yoga when I was like nine or 10. I went with a man from India. It was at our YMCA. And we used to sit in positions and just meditate on colors, which at the time I didn't understand was my, were my chakra colors. And so, so it just kind of- It's funny because when I think of a psychic medi medium, I don't think of like a dude in a turban. 
And so how do we, I mean, I don't, I guess, I don't know why do I consider psychic mediums to be, I don't know, who, what are they? Little old Italian ladies? No, uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Uh, so, but, but seeing, meeting this guru and sitting in meditation yeah. allowed you to discover that- I, I believe I always had the ability, but that helped to open up my third eye. Uh, a lot of it is meditation where you have your third eye and you just kind of, when you close your eyes, you focus on your third eye and you strengthen that ability. I repressed it for many years, as most children will when they're forced to do something. And then... So you were forced to go meditate? I was forced. Ooh, your mother made you go to, instead of going to church, she made you go to uh, meditation? To my room. Oh, you had to go sit in your room and meditate? Yes. Oh, interesting. How long were you expected to meditate for? Uh, I can't remember, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, All right. So yeah. there you were, nine or ten, and you were being uh, drug around by the hair to yeah. all these metaphysical yeah. things. Yeah. And, and, we and, did. And, and did you meet other psychic mediums? Um, she had some friends and that were very big into paranormal, and they actually had spirits in their home. And when I was young, I did live in a home where there was activity. Um, they would play with the furnace, the thermostat, or they'd shut the TV off. <laughs> um, there was an older woman, you could see her apparition going between the two bedrooms in the hallway upstairs. Between my room, my younger siblings, she'd go back and forth. And my mother reported, she's now cross, but that my brother, when he was in his crib, used to tell the lady, he'd be talking, going, go get my mom, go get my mom. And my mother would hear him and go in, and she'd go, who are you talking to, the lady? Oh. So actually there was um, sightings of her, so mom did some research in the neighborhood, and there was a woman who had lived there for years and years, and she loved cats, and she died in the house, and she stayed. And she stayed. Now, is your brother a psychic medium also? No, no, no other. No. So he could at some point see the when he was the little. ghost lady mm -hmm. that yeah. died in the house. Now, why uh, people die in houses all the time? Do they? Do their spirits always stay there? Why was this lady there? Was she scary? I, maybe, maybe she just was connected. Didn't want to leave the physical world. Some people get lost. Some people stay. When I channel um, spirit or loved ones. I see them at different levels. So if somebody is getting ready to cross or they just cross, they kind of come in just above someone's shoulder. Mm. And if they're still, and I call that like the first plane, and then a lot of times a lot of spirits will stay in the second plane where they're still kind of attached to this lifetime and they haven't quite gone ready to transcend into the next lifetime. And then sometimes they are in I don't know what you would officially call it. I call it the transitioning stage. So I see, um, when I channel, I see loved ones or spirits in different levels. Okay, so there you were, nine years old, uh, meditating, seeing some, you know colors or chakras or being taught mm -hmm. this, but you were goofing off in your room instead. Yeah. From that's, yes, that's I the did. story so far. Okay, then, so yeah. how did you become, so then how did you, this, the mosquitoes are yes. just after you. I know. Um, there's that little bottle of spray. If somebody yeah, wants it's it. empty. It's empty. Well, there you go. Oh, well. Oh, well, you're going to just be uh, eaten by mosquitoes. So, at what point did you decide that uh, you were being communicated to? Okay. So, for many years, I repressed it. And then, when I was in my early 40s, I was at a convention for work by myself in Saratoga Springs, New York. And what kind of work were you doing at that time? I was a director for community residence. Okay, so you were at a community residence, so not, it wasn't a paranormal. No, my, okay. my, my, my job that brings me income is I work with people with addiction, mental health, and um, mostly with criminal backgrounds. <laughs> and I've been doing that for 30 years. So I was at a convention and something said, go buy a deck of cards. So I went to the borders, bought a deck of angel cards, and I just started reading. Okay, and just when time. you said something said, how, I mean. I don't know, something, my intuition just said, why don't you go buy a deck of cards? And I did, and 
it was just time. And how, I mean, how come, I mean, if, you, if you'd had this ability the whole time and been blocking it, why do you think that all of a sudden you heard? You know, I, that's an interesting question, Laura. My grandmother, Jenny, who I was very close to, she crossed, I would say shortly before that, maybe a year. And she always helped me and she helped me with my children. And I kind of attribute it to her, like saying, okay, now here is, it's time to open this up and this is gonna help you financially as well. You know, it was like an added support for me and my children because I was a single mom. Okay, so I think it all just was divine guidance. So you went and bought this deck of cards, mm -hmm. and then what'd you do, sit down and- I just I mean, started playing with them, and then everybody I knew, I'd say, can I give you a reading? Can I give you a reading? Can I give you a reading? Until they were like, no, we don't want any more readings. We're done. And then it's just all divine guidance. I believe in divine guidance or divine interventions, whatever you want to call it. And how do you it. know that it's divine and not devilish? Because it's always for the good. I don't believe in devilish. Okay. I don't believe they're, I believe, I just, I don't believe that they're evil. Okay. Well, I believe there's people that do evil things. But, but you don't feel like there's a big old evil out there that's no. come to get you. Like people talk about, I'll tell you what's getting you right now is the mosquitoes, not the evil. Yeah. I wish, you know, that's is that okay. little candle still burning over there? Yes. This is a citronella candle. I believe, I believe you're getting eaten alive and oh, and you're, you've gotten hot wax dripped all over you, Willie. Really? Thank you. This is so exciting. There's hot wax. Don't get it on the yeah. And Michaela um, says this is very interesting. Oh, okay. Thank you, Michaela. Um, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to ask them. We have Jay Michael uh, reading, um, reading comments for us. Yeah. Okay, so you, you just got these cards. Mm -hmm. And you, um, uh, shall we, would you be willing to give a reading for us? Sure. Okay, um, David, would you be willing to be read? Sure. Okay, come on up here. Okay, we'll see what comes You through. sit right Let's here. Do something very, um, let's see. There you go. I'm going to, I'm going to leave the stage and, and this might be, this might be what it would be like if somebody yeah. came to see you. Yes. Okay. Okay, David, we'll just do a quick reading. Go ahead and put your energy into the cards. You can shuffle them or do whatever you please. David, I'm just gonna go ahead and start. Uh, when okay. I channel the energy around you, is your mom on the other side as well? Yes. Okay, so mom is stepping in. Um, is she like to drink tea or something or coffee? What was it? She's beer. Saying, beer. So that's what she's pouring. Okay. Because she is coming in and she is pouring something. To look okay. Right. So that would be beer as you identify. Um, but she wasn't a mean person. She was just laid back. And I see her yeah. sitting a lot. Like she might, did she sit on a porch or outside a lot? Um, I especially see her just kind of sitting outside chilling, maybe possibly drinking her beer. Spirits coming through David and telling me that she really enjoyed that. Oh, it was absolutely. almost like I get a sense when she was in this physical world that um, she didn't really bother many people. She no. Kind of, she kind of kept to herself. That sounds more like my grandma than my mom. Oh, <laughs> grandma, did grandma sit with her? Oh, yes. Okay, so it could be both of them together in the heavens. Okay. Did Grandma drink beer, too, or did she drink tea? Tea. Okay, so they're <laughs> both there. They're both there, because I was seeing tea first. So, and did they have, like, a rocking chair or just kind of a set? No, they sat chairs? on the front stoop. Okay, yeah. So they are together in the heavens, um, drinking their liquid beverages of choice. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, I just get a lovely energy, almost as if you weren't rich, but you weren't poor, but you got along. Things were good. Um, and Dad worked very hard. He did. Did he have a disability or hurt his back or something uh, later in life? Yeah. Okay. Because they're saying, you know, he worked until he couldn't. Yeah. Um, they are so blessed for, to have you. They were blessed to have you in their life. Um, they say, always be true to yourself. We never judged you. Absolutely. And if people do, shame on them <laughs> uh they're very happy of where you're at in your life today and do you have a brother as well 
purpose? No, two brothers that have crossed. Two that have crossed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Both young. Okay, but their energy is around you. Oh, well. absolutely. They're around you. Um, they're also telling me, David, that you two have the ability to be missing. Okay. Yes. Um, I'll have you go ahead and pull three cards. Three cards. Usually we have table, but we can use my lap. Sure. So with your left hand, just kind of pull three cards one at a time. Thank you. Even if I'm left-handed? It doesn't matter. <laughs> it can be any hand you want. Thank you. Okay, David, so the first card up is the Page of Cups. I don't know if that's in there. I don't read cards. <laughs> I just want to let everybody know if those professional tarot card readers out there. Let's see the Page of Cups. I'll show it to um, I don't know what they need. They tradit like what they mean, you know, as per the tarot. I just channel as okay. per the person. So for the tarot card readers out there, you're right, it's probably not the traditional meaning of Tara. Just know I really don't read cards. I just bought a deck of Tara cards because everybody kept asking me, Michelle, do you read Tara? Sure, <laughs> if you want me to. <laughs> so anyway, when I channel this um, around you, David, your spirit and your angels are coming through and saying, stay connected to the earth. Okay, you are an earth child. Do you like to do like gardening or be around? doing things with the earth, flowers. Other than admiring it, walking through forests. Uh. Okay, well stay connected to the earth and the water, okay? That makes, it raises your frequency. Were you a boulder? No. No, who was the boulder around you? Mm -hmm. You're showing the boulder. A friend of mine when I was very young. Okay, all right, and you enjoy boulder with them? Absolutely. Oh, okay, because boulder, the water. The middle card, or the second card, is the Queen of Cups. And when I channel the energy around here, or around you, David, um, yeah. spirits coming through and telling me that you are the Queen of Cups. Thank you. And are you treated like a Queen of <laughs> Absolutely. Cups? Absolutely. <laughs> and you rule the and roost? And they're always full. <laughs> are you, do you rule the roost? Would you say you're more uh, of a better ask you. <laughs> well, but I'm just saying what they're showing me is you lovingly rule the roost. So he may think he's in charge, but spirit saying I'm in the background and I. Who's the real queen, right? <laughs> it's you. Ah. Uh, and your last card, the nine of swords. Hmm. Okay. When I channel the energy around the nine of swords, David. Um, they're telling me don't listen to what people say or shut the voices in your head. I don't know if sometimes you Worry about what people think or worry about what people say, but this is kind of in the future So I am getting a sense that somebody's going to be saying something and you're not going to like what you hear And this is to come so just be aware of this and shut it out Okay, don't pay attention to it Okay, that makes right. sense it may be starting to happen now, but it's moving into the future a little bit. So just shut it out. They're going, just shut it out. It doesn't matter what they say, it doesn't, it just, it doesn't apply. If it doesn't apply, let it fly. Okay? okay? You understand this. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, and with that, I will do with my Thank you. Michaela wanted to know what deck you are using. Um, it's just, to be honest, it's just a version of Tara. I don't know who created it because I lost the box. This is the this is what's on the back. Yeah, I just carry that. I happen to carry that in my car. Can you ask Michaela if she's familiar with the 1111 deck? Oh, oh, the, there's a question for Michaela who's watching from David. He wants to know if you're familiar with the 1111 deck? Yes. Okay, that was a question for Michaela. Yeah. All right, so... Uh, you, when somebody sits down, mm -hmm. you feel these energies coming in and you just sort of say what comes to mind. Yeah, they just connect with me. Um, I, I don't know how to explain it. I had this one really very um, intuitive psychic who's very well known in the upstate New York area. Um, I had read for him because I do different psychic fairs in the St. Pete area like I just did the expo for Unity Church. 
and I'm doing the next, I'm gonna be in, at the next one um, in November 12th. I, I do psychic fairs at the Temple of the Living God in Kenwood, and I just was there yesterday working that fair. Um, but he came in for a reading at the church, the Temple of the Living God, and then I found out, I'm not gonna say his name, because, you know, I don't have his permission, but he's a very well-known psychic um, in Lilydale, which is a psychic community similar to Castagua Cast here in Florida. And he asked me, he said, would you come to Lilydale and teach mediumship? And I was like, I don't know how to teach it. I mean, people do. I just, I said, I don't know how to teach it. How do you teach this? I don't know. Yes. How do you learn it? How do you teach it? It just came. Oh. I don't know how to explain it. And you do, uh, you do. I'm very blessed. You are very blessed, so am I. Um, you, under Sunshine Guidance Services, people can book an appointment with you to mm -hmm. have a private reading. Yes. There's also, what is this live thing you do on? Oh yeah, I, I just started um, a YouTube channeling um, video station. It's called Bedtime Channeling with Michelle. I've done three videos. Um, so I'm just gonna see where it goes. It's about 30 minutes and I just open up to spirit and get and share whatever messages come through for the world. Uh, I'm and hoping. Why did you decide to do that? Well, you know, I watch a couple of channelers on YouTube I follow. Okay. Amanda Ellis, Elizabeth April, she channels the Galactic Federation. Amanda works with angels. I've been watching them for years and I'm like, I can do this. Why can't I share messages? Why not? I can have my own talk show. Why yeah, not? I can right. do this. So I'm just going to do it. It's, let's see where it goes. Maybe I'll help somebody with a message from Spirit. And I noticed that when you, you know, you sort of ask questions. Oh, was she drinking tea? So sometimes you get a, a vision and you need some help from yeah. the person that you're reading for. Yes. Now some people might say, oh, well, she doesn't know what she's talking about. She's asking me questions and I'm telling her. What do we say to that? Um, I just need validation. You know, like there, that was, I was seeing T, but there was mom and I was seeing mom and they're together. So it's hard to, sometimes it's hard to figure out who's who. And so I guess the people have to <laughs> want to be working with you. Yeah, I can just say, well, you, you're supposed to be the fortune teller. You tell me. And I'll say, well, then you're blocking your reading. Oh, so I can't say so you, we perhaps. have to be, yeah, that's possible. You have to be, you have to be open. I mean, if there's times people come in and they're all nervous or, you know, they're like, this is stupid in their head, and they block it. And, yeah. and, and I haven't had to do that often, but I can tell, and I'll say, are you, like, blocking your reading? Because I need you to breathe, and I need you to relax, or maybe and do you I feel can't. What um and what good does this uh what good what good does this do people? Why would they come to you? Well, I again feel so blessed that I was given this ability, God given. Um, it helps people have closure. It yeah. helps people have closure. Um, I'm a counselor in my regular world, where you have this you know, physical world, so, and it's an extension of my counseling in a different way. Doesn't it also have people have expansion, expansion. into themselves? Yeah, it can help people to Instead of closing, build, it opens. It helps to open and also gives guidance for paths. Sometimes people are struggling and spirit will never tell you what to do because we are born with free will. Um, but they can show you if you go this path, this could happen. If you take this path, this could happen. You choose, right? And, and we can change our future by taking a different path. I guess everybody, um, thank you. I really appreciate your, your coming. And I guess everybody's looking for answers. I'd much rather you just tell me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd much rather you come, you give me the answer. Please give me the answer, like somehow. Um, anyway, so uh, I guess we all have to find our own answers. And if, um, uh, if, any of the things that Michelle has talked about interest you. You can look up some of these places. You can look up Michelle. You can look up your, mm -hmm. what's the name of your YouTube thing again? Um, Bedtime Channeling with Michelle. Bedtime and Channeling with Michelle. feel free to contact me through my website, sunshineguidedservices.com. You can email through there and it'll go to my email for an appointment. You could go on Facebook, my Facebook page, Sunshine Guidance Services. 
and you can instant message me um, for an appointment. Well, there you go. Uh, I want to give you, uh, this is some dried Moringa um, oh. from my Moringa tree over here, and you can make tea with it or um, put it in soups or stir fries. It's very, oh, very yummy and healthy for you. you. This is what it looks like before it gets all dry. Oh. oh, is there a question from the audience there? Michaela said, yes, she has heard of the, of the 11-11 deck. Okay. Jessica Williams, have you heard from people's pets that have passed on? Always. Ooh. Pets come through all the time. They actually stay with you in spirit forever. Okay. I just did a reading yesterday for a lady and her cat that had just crossed like a few days before. It was right there. Okay. You know, well. and they do. And I was working. I still kind of hope, trying to open up the ability to be a pet psychic. So, and sometimes it works. I've got to get the animals to look right at my eyes, but sometimes I can actually get messages from them and they'll tell me what's happening or what they need. It, oh. So I'm hoping to grow on that ability. That is, um, this is a piece of, a fresh piece so Thank that you. you can see sort of what it tastes like. These oh, flowers are for like you. This. Yeah, you can just eat it like that. These flowers oh, are for you. I, uh, you. I know you live in an apartment, but you can always use some. Um, oh, always something and I really appreciate your time thank you and um I love all the and presents. there you go who knew <laughs> who knew one could do all of this yes all right thank and you so much I appreciate your time you and thank me. you for sharing with people you never know what's going to happen in the world My goodness. well some of you all might know that I've been traveling um I went uh to Virginia that no talking in the background hush Hush in the background. They get talking in the audience. They get, I need a, I need a, a whip cracker. Just offer her some bug spray. Yeah, well, that, don't, I, I mean, do it in Panama. Uh, it is a, all right. Ah, I turned into a school teacher. It's a metamorphosis. Uh, I went on uh, a trip to North Carolina and Virginia, and I have some show and tell. I love show and tell. Uh, I went uh, to see uh, a friend of mine, um, Larry Hinkle, and he makes ukuleles, and he had this band called Alpha Jerk, and they did a show, and everybody was presented with one of these little buttons, and the button says, why? And it's like, oh, why? Why did you give us these buttons? Why? Oh, and so that I thought was an interesting gift, um, and so I, you know, treasure that. I went by and saw some other friends, um, Bob and Todd, who have a place called Gardens Unlimited, and they do bonsai trees. And I was given this beautiful catalog of their work, and I had the, the, the joy of going by to visit them. So this is the type of things I do. And one of the things I wanted to do was visit some of my elderly friends that had not yet crossed over. And so I was visiting my friend Polly Jett, who's in her 90s, and she offered me this purse that belonged to her mother. So this wow. is from the 60s. It's, it's in immaculate condition, and it still has its little teeny change purse with it. And I just don't even know what to do with this beautiful thing, but it is, it's interesting how something like, this is from the 60s, so it's 60 years old, and it's in immaculate condition and it's been passed on to me. I'm not sure what's going to happen to it. But um, these are some of the treasures that I've got like in my far away travels. And then right here next to home, I was walking and I found these the other day. And I'm like, what are these? They look so yummy. Well, they're from a palm tree. And so I was chewing on one. I'm like, mm. I don't know if you're supposed to eat them or not, but that's the kind of thing I do is go around. I just think they're beautiful. And I also wanted to show everybody this. This is an acorn. It's the biggest acorn you've ever seen. Your dreams. This, a huge acorn. A friend of mine gave it to me because I'm always showing off odd things that I find. And so she brought me this beautiful, large acorn. So I want you all to imagine that your dreams are growing, you know, like have as much potential as this. And I wanted to show you the seeds. These are all different seeds. This is the Moringa. The seeds when they're, I don't know if I'm showing them very well or not. These are the seeds. 
and you can filter water through these. You take all these seeds and this pulp and you put it in a jar or something and you pour water in the top and it would filter it on the way down. And the peas, when they're younger like this, people eat them like little, they can be like a little pea when they're small. These are kind of dried up from the other day. Anyways, these are the type of things, like if I were starving, I could eat this Moringa. Very good. Anyways, I do this traveling around, but really I don't like traveling, and I never have. I kind of like being at home. And uh, I used to live in Virginia, and I would come down here to St. Pete to visit my mother and father. And um, one time when I came home, I wrote this song, and so I'm just gonna sing it about. It's called, If God is Willing. Other people like to jet around But I'm happy with my feet on the ground If you had money you would take a trip Maybe sail on a big airship But if God is willing and the creeks don't rise I'll be right here with your big bird about being happy at home. And now I no longer live in a house in Virginia with a red front door, but I'm still um, delighted to be at home. Uh, okay, Constance, will you join me on the stage? I'm so excited. Hey, so Laura. I said hi, hey. welcome. Yeah. How are you? Should I sit on the other side of you so you don't poke me with the guitar? That's probably a good idea. We'll, we'll, just we'll, just do, we'll dance. We'll, yeah, I didn't know we were going to dance. These flowers are for you, Miss Constance. Oh, you're so sweet. And this is some of this. Now, if you can make tea out of it, it's really good for you. You can throw it in some stir fry. Oh, you I like can, tea. You can, yeah, it tastes, um, I don't know if you want to try some right there. It tastes kind of nutty. Um, and it's supposedly like one of the most healthy, healthy things. Like it does you taste nutty. It does kind of taste nutty. You can put it in, like if you're making a stir fry or lasagna yeah. or something like that. Um, the other thing you can do it is just sprinkle it around the bottom of your plants and water it in. It'll feed them. My husband would like that. Yes, <laughs> yes. He's he's the one with the green thumb in our family. Yeah, something like that. So, um, Constance, we've known each other for quite a while. You were one of my first friends when I first moved here. We would we met at the Blueberry Patch. Yes. And we're both uh, de devotees of the blueberry patch. I don't guess we're we're not in the culture or anything, but we know it's we know <laughs> it's more about the music. It's about the music and, and fellowship. And fellowship and um, so and at that time you were writing a magazine called Bay Buzz, but that's in the hip, in the past. It was she was like an early pioneer of you know Bay Buzz days. That was fun. I that, miss it. I do miss it. Yeah, that was an amazing sort of. We uh, did a lot of support for all the local musicians here in Tampa Bay. Yeah, and wrote articles, did and, interviews, and CD reviews, and, oh, yes, and it, that was, was, it was a lot of fun. That it was, was a lot of work. Time ago, it was a lot of work, and yeah, and a lot of things have changed. A lot of things have changed, like all the things you had to do to do it back when you were doing it with lot but in the meantime you have uh gotten your real estate license i did that was a lot of work <laughs> <laughs> i do and now next week i am taking my exam for my continuing education to keep my license right so you uh you had to study a long time to get a real estate license i have a very particular curious story i mean it did take me a long time and it's a hard test and I did not pass the first time and oh. then I had a really good friend um, in fact my lead guitarist Will 
who encouraged me to keep going. Keep going. I know. I remember. And, and and you did. So you went, you studied hard, and then you went and you took the test, and boom, you failed. And you didn't just go home and, and no. crawl in. You, you studied some more. I studied more, and I took it again, and I passed. Yay! <laughs> All right. So, so now I just got to pass this next test, and I get to keep my that. license. And, and then, then after that, you know, if you are buying or selling a house, talk to me. I will hook you up with a really, really great agent because um, I work for an awesome company called Coastal Properties. And we have over 300 agents. And it's a great job and it's a great learning experience. So yeah, call me and I'll help you sell or buy a house. And you uh, you were working for this company before you actually had your license. No. No, you had to get, have your license. I before. was working for a different real estate company okay. at the time. Uh, but and now you have I've, a license. So. I've, I've evolved, I've moved on from where I was to where I am. And I'm very happy that I did that. Okay. And so, and that's your, your work life. But you're also still writing songs. I am. And you're also still writing songs. I am. I just wrote two new songs. Um, I write songs based on emotions, feelings, personal experiences, as I think most songwriters do. Um, the song that I'm going to play for you today is a song that, it was a hard song for me to write because you don't ever want to hurt anybody, ever. But this person hurt me. And it wasn't directed at them, say, but it was more of me getting my emotions out. And when I did, uh, I felt better. Um, so it's called Sticks and Stones, if you'd like to hear it. I would. I'm going to get up and let you have the stage. All right, this is Sticks and Stones. I'm going to quickly tune real quick. This humidity is making my strings go a little bit. That's something that you've got to deal with when you live in Florida. Or as my friend Dave would say, we tune because we care. <laughs> you don't want to hurt your ears. I'm doing good. And one more. All right. So take two. This is Sticks and Stones. Still the same 
music because there's freedom in music yeah. and you could take this song and relate it to any person or any situation into in your life and it still makes sense and, and the message would get across that's what I love about music I mean you can listen to a love song that you know I wrote for a guy but the freedom in music says I could also feel that way about my mom or you know depending on the song um, but I just love music so much I've been a musician all my life. So have you always performed? I mean, did you grow up doing that? Or when no. did you start performing? I started because I, let me say that Constance, not only does she sing and play guitar, but she fronts a band sometimes and she is a rock star. She's got all the rock star moves. And so, uh, I mean, yes. you know, she sings after midnight. Fun, but she does have some, it's After Midnight is the band. After Midnight is my band. Uh, we're not as, um, we're not playing as much as we used to, but we do play a lot at the American Legion um, on St. Pete Beach a lot yeah. oh, okay. um, for fun, um, sometimes for money. <laughs> um, and it's fun, and I love the guys that I play with. So shout out to Will and Polly and Mike. Um, so, and I appreciate yeah. everything they do and they make my music come alive. Because I will give them a skeleton of a song, like this song, Sticks and Stones. And I'm like, okay, put the meat on it. And then you get the drums going and the bass going, and, the, and it's like, okay, thank you for putting meat on my skeleton. And then how did you learn all those fancy rock star moves? Do you do? <laughs> I mean, really, I'm serious. I don't know. has got all, all the rock star moves. I, I think that's just something you're born with. I, I guess so. It's like, it's amazing. Um, it's amazing. We, we have some questions. What's that? Is, is anybody able to go to the American Legion? Oh, on Sydney people... Beach, it is public. It is open to the public, so. And where is that on Sydney uh, Beach? I don't know the exact address but I know it's near McDonald's mm -hmm. <laughs> on the regular basis. I guess you could get in touch with them online or something yeah. today yeah. About that okay. somebody's asking whether uh, do, you, do you have do you have a gig lined up now there no no, no. but I was doing um, a Saturday nights there for a while um, I also play piano so that was a big piano uh, yeah. night for me okay so what your Constance is your name mm -hmm. um, and then sing Constance at gmail.com. It's pretty easy. Sing Constance. <laughs> Sing Constance. At gmail.com. Um, as uh, as a songwriter, uh, you've been working on a new song. I hear. I do, and um, maybe your guests and your watchers can help me out. I don't have a name for this song. Okay, this is this is the live. This, this is my latest me. song. Yeah. We get to hear the song, and then um, if you have a name suggestion, you su can suggest it. She's not necessarily gonna take sure. it. True. No, so I'd what, love to hear your suggestions. We want to hear your suggestions. So, what brought about this song? What What was the? Um, kind of got tired of writing the sad songs. You know, I wanted something uppity and happy, and you could dance to. Um, and then I was I I take movies or even sometimes novels. In a situation I'm like I could write a song about that and this is basically a girl or a guy who meets somebody and they're like 
you're the one, you know. Ooh. I, I think I want to be with you. Okay. Um, so it's, it's untitled, but it goes like this. Okay. I hope you like it. Pick my fingers on my strings Come up with a melody and a song for you I, I sing The chatter has slowed down, it's getting late Listen how they feed the fear I waste And I can't help but to think It's not the day Cause I know we've been trying to say Right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anybody else have a suggestion? I was too. Oh, okay. Yes? Direct enlightenment. Direct, Direct enlightenment. enlightenment. Okay. Wow, that's deep. That's deep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I was uh, say woman on a mission. I'm, I'm an woman on a mission. I know that one was pretty Aren't good. Are we all? <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Uh, okay. Well, there might be some others. Uh, and uh, Wow, can't wait to hear. Can't wait to hear. I know getting the proper uh, name for a song, I guess, is important. Sometimes it comes easy. Um, I have a friend who likes to give songs a weird take, like name a song, a title that you don't even hear in the song. Um, so, Light and Enchantment, what was that? Yeah. Enlightenment. 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 Yeah. I know right now. You're uh, telling him right out. <laughs> yeah, there was a. I uh, was uh, watching the Florida Folk Show down at the Craftsman Gallery. They they record the Florida Folk Show live at the Craftsman Gallery on Saturday Great. mornings. And uh, Berkeley was there, and he was writing instrumentals, and and they were coming up with names out of uh, Julia Child's cookbook. There was something <laughs> like you know. Uh, Eggplant for everyone or something. I can't That's remember. Funny. Eggplant for all occasions or something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do we have a? Jessica Williams says, Barry Seconds, Woman on a Mission. Oh, thank okay. you, Barry. Woman yes. on a Mission. Yay. Barry Seconds, that one. Okay. Well, you know, that's, uh, yes, Woman on a Mission. I don't think that's a, I think that's a pretty good thing. I think we'll go with that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll go with that uh, for the moment anyways. Uh, and you, when you write a song, how do you do it? Usually I, it's easier if you come up with the lyrics and the melody at the same time. That's the way I do it. I'm, um, but sometimes I'll just write a poem and then it's like, you know, that could be a good song. And then I try huh. um, putting a melody to it. Um, sometimes I get inspired by other musicians and I'll like listen to their melodies and not that I want to steal their song, but it might be taking the emotion or the message. Um, so it, it happens all different ways. Yeah. There's no one particular formula for songwriting. Yeah, and everybody has their own. 
Uh, and I guess it's it's worth doing it. You, uh, did you play as a teenager? I started playing piano at seven. Okay. I wanted to start earlier, because um, I come from a very musical family. My father played piano. My oldest brother played piano. So I wanted to play piano too. The teacher who was teaching my brother at that time, this is going back into the 70s, um, she said, no, she's only six years old. She has to be seven, which I think everyone today would be like, what? <laughs> yeah. um, you start them as soon as they can, you know? Yeah. But I had to wait till I was seven. So in the meantime, um, I would just bang on the keys at home. Um, I love to sing, and my father, as I said, played piano. So he would um, play piano, and I didn't really know how to read yet. So I would just make up lyrics as he was playing, you know, he played New York, New York, and I'd be singing something else to the, you know, the same melody. Um, so that's how that started. Then I moved from New Jersey to Florida, and I saw on the beaches, like Madeira Beach, Treasure Island, there would be like circles of people singing around one guy playing the guitar. And I'm like, I wish I could bring my piano out to the beach. Mm -hmm. And you can't. And for a long time, and I mean a long time, I just kept saying, I wish I could play guitar. I wish. And one day it hit me like, stop wishing. Let's just try it. So I went out and I got a cheap acoustic classical guitar. And if you know anything about it, it has a very wide neck. I find it a very good guitar for, I call it boot camp. It'll let you know if you're going to continue playing or not, because it's, your fingers are just stretched out. Um, but the, the strings were easier because they were nylon, so they didn't hurt to push down. And I played the death out of that. And finally, my husband said, you need a real guitar. So we got my first Ibanez, and I found out about the pain of real string guitars and the calluses. And right now, my fingers look like they're grilled. Um, but that's, you know, you want, you want that. Um, so I was about 30 years old when I started playing guitar. That's it. Isn't that mm -hmm. wonderful? It's like, in, you know, you were in your 40s when you started doing readings. We had this weird uh, youth-centric idea that if you didn't start playing when you were three, you'll never make it. If you're not famous by the time you're 12, you can just forget it. And you can start things later in life, like you your real estate career or yes. guitar playing. Or yes. And I'm happy to say because of my guitar playing, um, my other two daughters have picked up music. Um, I, they blow me away. If you know Savannah Lee, uh, she's out there playing oh, every day. Every day, she's, She bl she took the guitar and just ran with it. And now she's playing fiddle. And she plays fiddle. Um, she also plays a little mandolin, but she really rocks the fiddle. Yeah. And she's got an amazing voice. And then there's Sydney, uh, who does musical drama, uh, musical theater, um, and she just did the play Matilda. Um, a few years ago, she, when she was little, she actually got the lead part of Annie, which I was so proud because I was a big <laughs> Annie freak growing up. See, this is one of your successes. You have, what, three beautiful children? I do. I do. Uh, Daniel's my oldest, and he's happily married, and maybe going to start a family soon. So, yay. So yep. you, you consider yourself a success? Yeah. Yay! I'm yeah. a success. I just want to make. I don't think I'm doing too like, bad. I think you're doing. I think you're doing really well. Thank you. And like I say, when we first met, you were, um, you know, often at the Blueberry Patch and very kind to Blueberry me. Blueberry Patch really opened a lot of doors for me musically. Yeah. It got me out of my shell. I mean, I still get nervous, you know, um, but you, how do you get over um, the the stage fright? Do it twenty five thousand times. Yes. You know, and that's how you're going to get over that. Um, but, and it's fun and the rewards because you're doing something that's so accepting and that's what I love because you get to share something. Yay. Okay. Well, thank you for having shared. Looks thank like you. we've shared a whole, practically a whole hour has gone by. And thank you for my flowers. Uh, you are welcome. And you know, the other thing is that this, this is the Moringa. It's been sitting here in the damp, so it's kind of still, but if it gets really good and dry, you can powder it. You can just powder it up and put it in a shake or something. So if anybody in the audience wants to take some moringa leaves, we will send you home with that. I'm gonna sing one song on the way out. You wanna play along or you, uh, just an A? Just an A? Like, ah, da, da. Yeah, so we're gonna go A and then B and then E and then A. And then just like the song yes. I just did. Yes, well there you go. <laughs>
Next one right here, local in two weeks. If you want to be in the audience, we have a question. What's that? Catherine Petit says, "Great show." Oh yay! Awesome. Show number one hundred and one. It's worth it. I don't know why I'm doing this. I want to thank you, Kriya, for the dress. <laughs> yay! Goodbye. Bye guys. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>